Fabrizio, uh, and ladies and gentlemen, good morning, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk today about the role of the military in cooperative security. Echoing the statement uh, previously this week by NATO, I do, I do want to express our heartfelt and deepest condolences to the families of the victims in Paris. We stand in strong solidarity with the government and the people of France for their unwavering determination to deal with this terrorist threat. <coughs> Ongoing changes in the strategic environment have resulted in an increasingly multipolar world where both state and non-state actors have demonstrated capacity and willingness to challenge a traditionally rules-based international order. Threats have become diverse and multidimensional, emanating from all directions covering a broad spectrum, including conventional and unconventional means, in multiple domains and spanning the physical, virtual, and psychological dimensions. The current environment confronts NATO with two strategic challenges, the full spectrum challenge of Russia's strategy and the enduring, variable, and complex threats emanating from the South. To respond to these challenges, NATO continues to fulfill three essential core tasks, collective defense, crisis management, and cooperative security. Many of the challenges emanating from the South, like the uncontrolled flow of populations, threats to energy supplies, supplies terrorism, and proliferation, to name a few, I think are best countered through cooperative security. NATO's strategic concept details cooperative security three pillars, arms, arms control, disarmament, non-proliferation, the open door, as well as partnerships. NATO's open door policy is based on a goal of Europe that is whole and free, believing that it would be best served by the eventual integration of all European countries that so desire. But it is through our partnerships that we can best meet the challenges of today's environment which is full of interconnected threats. Why does NATO value cooperative security and specifically partnerships so much, and what is the military's role? NATO views that the Euro-Atlantic security is best assured through a wide network of partner relations with countries and organizations around the globe. Dialogue and cooperation with partners contributes to international security, to defending the values on which our alliance is based, and to NATO operations as well as to preparing interested nations for membership of NATO. NATO can contribute to broad, coordinated engagements of the international community in addressing threats and challenges through a network of partners. Through various operations with allies and partners, NATO has endeavored to keep and, as necessary, restore the peace. Over the past two decades, the Alliance has developed a network of structured partnerships with countries of the Euro-Atlantic area, the Mediterranean and Gulf region, which are many are represented here today, as well as individual relations across the globe. Today, NATO actively works with 41 nations and engages with other international actors and organizations on a wide variety of political and security-related issues. For more than a year, NATO has been developing a collection of adaptation measures in order to better respond to today's challenging security situation. Successful adaptation to these challenges requires enhanced regional understanding and situational awareness. The military, I think, can play a vital role in increasing this regional understanding and situational awareness through active engagement with our partners and international organizations. Our military's presence throughout our security cooperation program contributes to maintaining peace by reassuring our friends and deterring our enemies. But these engagements provide a broad range of other benefits that include NATO's ability to achieve a higher level of shared understanding that is normally possible through intelligence means alone, a reduced chance of NATO and partners experiencing strategic surprise, and the establishment of enduring relationships with military and political leaders. The lessons learned from NATO operations, and particularly in Afghanistan and the Western Balkans, make it clear that a comprehensive political military civilian approach is necessary for effective crisis management. The Alliance will engage actively with other international actors before, during, and after a crisis to encourage collaborative analysis, planning, and conduct of activities on the ground to maximize coherence and effectiveness of the overall international effort. The military's engagement through cooperative security sets the foundation for this to happen when a crisis arises. 
NATO's military engagements supported in continually monitoring and analyzing the international environment in order to anticipate a crisis and, where appropriate, take active steps to prevent them from becoming a larger conflict. Through engagement, NATO endeavors to build defense and security-related capacities of partners that will increase their resiliency in today's security environment. However, it goes without saying, the best way to manage potential conflicts is to anticipate them and, if possible, prevent them from happening. Therefore, cooperative security is a key task for the projection of stability through primarily proactive military activities. This activity influences and shapes the, strate the strategic environment in order to make it a more secure and less threatening. Projecting stability requires regional and cultural understanding, a key benefit of cooperative security, and should be considered as a long-term effort, where results will often be measured in years and sometimes even decades. In projecting stability, NATO's aim is to counter the destabilization that the interconnected threats of today's world survive and grow in. A lack of stability increases opportunities for corruption and the associated reduction in good governance that we have seen and has contributed to failed and failing states. Achieving the effect of stabilization may be accomplished through military activities which are tailored according to mutually agreed goals and harmonized with those of partners and other organizations. Projecting stability entails utilizing training, education, and other niche capabilities to enhance local defenses security capacity and resilience, and help address the root causes of instability. It is not limited to activities with partner nations, but can also include cooperative activities in support of other international and non-governmental organizations. Similarly, military cooperation is key in developing interoperability, raising mutual awareness, and improving understanding, which contributes to the overall stabilization effect. Let me give you some examples from our defense capacity building effort. Recently, a trilateral defense sector reform mapping exercise between NATO, the EU, and the UN was held. It produced a, a non-paper which outlines the respective strengths and areas of expertise of each organization. A structured staff-to-staff -staff dialogue to avoid duplication of effort and encourages the development of synergies in the area of defense sector reform. Some of NATO's partners that are not part of defense capacity building efforts have expressed interest in becoming involved. In fact, experts from Sweden and Switzerland took part in a recent team visit to Moldova as part of NATO's plan to advise and assist in the establishment of a national security strategy, defense plans, force structure, and required capabilities. In Georgia, the Joint Training and Evaluation Center team completed its assessment and briefed the Georgian Mil Minister of Defense, and in June, the first NATO-Georgia exercise was successfully conducted. Jordan has been invited to participate in the 2015 NATO Cyber Coalition exercise. This is the first time that such an invitation has been issued to a Mediterranean Dialogue partner country. On countering Improvised Explosive Devices, or IEDs, Jordan participated in two tailored courses. In fact, as we sit here today, a counter-IED action plan for assisting Ukraine is in development with several NATO nations already coming forward with resources and personnel to support Ukraine. So in closing, the military plays a critical enabling role, and many times a leading role, through its activities, activities in, in cooperative security. These activities can create an environment whereby all parties benefit. For example, the receiver's security cap capacities may be strengthened to deal with issues internally and thereby create resilience to interconnected threats of today's security environment. In return, NATO receives increased understanding and situational awareness along with the relationships needed to prevent crisis from arising. When they cannot be prevented, the foundations built through the military activities under security cooperation create the responsiveness not only within NATO, but also its partners to form the coalitions capable of operating together and, if necessary, ready to respond. It is this mutually beneficial relationship that is, that is the planned for product of the military's participation in cooperative security. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you.